Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to an episode of Coffee Break with Card, La Hora del Cafecito Sister Show. My name is Olivia McDonald, and I would like to welcome you to our show. Uh, Lourdes had a, another appointment this morning, so I'm going to be trying to fill her shoes. <laughs> Coffee Break with Card is a program dedicated to all those in our community who are living with autism, to their family members, and to all those who support them. So please come on in, join us at our virtual table, sign in in the comments section below, and let us know if you're having a cup of coffee with us. Um, in today's program, we will be discussing a, a very sensitive topic, but a very important one, and that is the topic of mental health. Uh, we will be talking about what mental health conditions are common for autistic individuals, and what is autistic burnout. Um, we will also be sharing how family members and friends can support autistic individuals who are struggling with their mental health. So please join us. We do have a lot to talk about. So let me uh, start off by introducing you to our coffee hostesses for today. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Olivia McDonald, and I'm a card consultant assigned to the early childhood team. I am Professionally, I'm a public health professional, and I am also <clears throat> the mother of two and have a, a younger brother diagnosed with autism. I am joined by my colleague, Yasmin Castellano. Buenos dias, Yasmin. Buenos dias, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. And as you know, Yasmin Castellano is an excellent professional in the field of mental health. Uh, she's a card consultant assigned to the youth a group from middle school to young adults. She is the mother of three, one of whom is diagnosed with autism. Welcome, Yasmin. Thank you. Um, before we get started, we do also want to review the rules that we want to adhere to during this program uh, to ensure a safe environment for us all. So please remember in the comments section to keep an open mind, a positive attitude, and to use respectful language. Um, let me go ahead and see if there are some who are, we need to say good morning to. So, oh, <laughs> good morning again to our colleague, Chris. It's nice to see you. Hey, Chris. Good morning. Chris is, is gunning for that number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, also to, to Lisa, to Jessica. Um, Meredith and David. Good morning, guys. Good morning. And we have also Cindy and Melissa. Melissa Rosado and Cindy met Crady. I'm sorry, Cindy. Oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. Yes, good morning. Sorry, really Cindy, if I didn't <laughs> pronounce it correctly. Good morning, guys. Um, so um, for those of you who are just joining us in today's program, we will be discussing the very important topic of mental health. Um, as I mentioned, Yasmin is an excellent mental health professional. So we will be asking her about what mental health conditions are common for autistic individuals and what is autistic burnout. Um, she will also be sharing how family members and friends can support autistic individuals who are struggling with their mental health. Um, and before we get to those questions, um, we did want to provide a trigger warning to our audience. Um, you know, as like again, these, this is a very sensitive topic, and as part of our conversation, we will be mentioning um, things such as bullying, self injury, and suicide. So we understand um, if this is not the show for you, or at least I'm not the show for you for the moment. Um, you know, take care of yourself. Um, but also as a, a reminder that, you know, per the Florida statute um, that we need to follow, CARD uh, cannot provide crisis intervention. Uh, we will be providing um, resources for um, different uh, crisis phone lines. Um, if uh, you are having an, uh, an emergency at the moment, you can always um, call 9 Eight, eight. So I think that's a new number, right, Yasmin? 988 um, 911 or to, you know, go to the nearest emergency room. You know, um, to, you know, this is obviously something to take seriously. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, we cannot provide uh, crisis intervention. 
So let me go ahead and um, get started. Uh, so, um, okay, sorry, I thought we had another, we, had, we already had a question. No, we don't. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and get started. So good morning, Yasmeen. Um, my first question to you is, you know, how common are mental health disorders among autistic individuals? Well, Olivia, um, there's uh, the estimates and the statistics are um, various, no? So, but uh, unfortunately, and sad to say, is that 70% of individuals with autism meet criteria for at least one co-occurring mental health disorder and up to 41% of individuals with autism meet criteria for two or more mental health disorders. Up to 64% of youth with autism use psychotropic medication. Psychotropic medication are the medication that we use to treat mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, etc. Uh, however, about 22% of youth with autism that also have mental health condition had delayed or no mental health treatment. And I want to clarify that autism, as we said in other um, uh, shows, autism, it is not. It mm -hmm. is not a mental health condition. It is a neurodevelopmental disorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, oh, I also wanted to clarify for, for our audience when we're saying co-occurring mental health disorders, we're, um, we're talking about um, kind of any kind of condition that is happening at the same time as somebody having another diagnosis. So, you know, they have, you know, the, the diagnosis of autism and they they would also meet that criteria for being diagnosed with, an, with a, a mental health disorder. Um, so how can mental health impact um, autism related behavior? So uh, Olivia, autism alone or with a uh, co-occurring condition can manifest differently in individuals. For example, uh, co-occurring conditions often exacerbate core uh, autism characteristics. For instance, uh, depression, anxiety can uh, aggravate social deficits, uh, communication difficulties, repetitive behaviors, and inflexible thinking, for example. Uh, some people with autism uh, have aversion to some uh, sensory stimuli in daily activities such as brushing teeth, taking a shower, combing their hair, and definitely a person uh, who also has um, depression can add another layer to that situation and make it harder to motivate oneself and face the activities that pose challenges. So co-occurring conditions uh, can overlap and make functioning very difficult. When we put social social challenges and emotional challenges together, we often see conflict with families and teachers, um, for example, and rejection and or bullying by peers, uh, social isolation, impaired academic, vocational performance, work performance, um, significantly uh, heightened uh, propensity for mental health disorders in adolescents, and limited prospects for independent living, college education, adult employment, among others. Okay. Um, are, you know, with all that information, are, are people with uh, autism at increased risk for suicide then? Yes, and that's another, uh, unfortunately, yes. Uh, and research has shown that people with uh, diagnosed with autism had over a threefold higher rate of suicide or a suicide attempt compared to those without autism. Uh, also, research uh, shows that girls with autism spectrum disorder 
were 4.41 times more likely to make a suicide attempt than autistic boys. There are many, many factors for this higher risk. Uh, we have chronic anxiety, um, ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, which are very common. We have, uh, for example, chronic anxiety, which literally wears a person down from the inside out. It really drains you physically and mentally and emotionally. So they have less resources from which to draw when attempting to cope. Uh, one of the hallmarks of um, ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is impulsivity mm -hmm. and the sense of urgency in the here and now, like it has to happen now. A uh, little ability to focus on a potential future that is different. So the combined expression of autism and ADHD can lead to feelings of frustration, anger, despair, and can sometimes lead to impulsive acts. Also, uh, and it's sad to say that sometimes including self-harm, and we see this a lot in our little ones. You know, when you, they have autism and they ADHD, and they feel extremely frustrated, you know, like, and they throw everything. Sometimes they go and bang their head against the wall. You know, that is a, a self-harming uh, behavior, you know, because they are hurting themselves, you know, because they are so frustrated um, when they cannot accomplish whatever task they are doing as they are playing. I don't know, the Lego game, for example, you know. So, um, so that's... that's, that's uh, like that, that's, that's an example. And it's very hard for our people with autism, not only when they're little, but also adults, you know, to be able to express uh, their needs and their feelings, you know, what they think, what they feel, uh, mentally, physically, uh, emotionally, be able to express it, you know? Uh, so they can be understood and, and, and connected. Uh, so there's uh, countless miscommunication, misunderstandings, like, you know, like I'm talking about right now, that are faced in social interactions with loved ones, peers, acquaintance, medical providers, uh, you know, their uh, work peers, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, it can feel overwhelming and difficult to resolve Social interactions can feel daunting. Uh, once a misunderstanding and mistakes are made on either side, it is often difficult to know how to recover and repair it. That happens a lot with our adults in their workplace, with friends. They say something that his coworker um, may take it, you know, in a different way. And that's not what the person with autism, that was not the intention, you know, it, uh, of what they were saying. So right there, there's a miscommunication. Right there, there's a misunderstanding. That's not my intention. That's not what I really meant to say. However, it's hard for me to express exactly what I want to say and what I mean to say, you know. So this is what came out of my mouth, totally far away from my intention, my coworker, you know, took it in the wrong way, and that's where the, the problem uh, arises, no? Many people with autism experience uh, the end or sudden absence of relationship without any sense of closure. Uh, this type of re rejection can lead uh, to a crisis, withdrawal from all relationship, isolation is a big factor in uh, declining mental health, and that's not only for people with autism, also for us neuro, neurotypicals. You know, you have a relationship, a friend, a family, a uh, partner, and out of the sudden is, you know, it's, it's, it's over. Of course, you know, it's, it's hard for anyone. Uh, difficulty uh, fitting in and, and having to change one's behavior to be accepted can lead to negative feelings that may spiral out of control to suicidal thoughts. Um, 
pretending to be neurotypical can lead to an existential crisis. Just try to put yourself in their shoes, you know, trying to to pretend that I'm neurotypical, forcing myself to making eye contact, forcing myself to to behave uh, in the expected ways. Uh, so I, you know, to prevent to be bullied or, or just because I want to be accepted or because I want to make friends. That is exhausting when you have to put a big effort into being someone that is not yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. After a year of, of therapist, uh, I mean, of therapies, hard work and perseverance, the uh, eventual outcomes can sometimes fall short of a person's life goals. When faced with uh, limited opportunities, one can begin to feel trapped in one's circumstances, you know? Um, there are many people who are taking multiple medications that are not managed closely enough to be beneficial or worse, have become toxic and dangerous. Some medications can have side effects that cause uh, suicidal thoughts and mood swings. In addition, there are many interactions or interreactions, I want to say, between medications and uh, alternative treatment supplements that are not fully researched or understood. So we need to be very, very careful uh, and cautious uh, when assessing for mental illness. It's important to check for drug interactions or poorly managed uh, polypharmacy. It is important for the doctors to, um, it is important to be under the care of a psychiatrist for medication management. You know, let the doctor to uh, take care of those uh, psychotropic medication, like we were talking about, explain to the doctor everything you take, even if it is a vitamin. It is important for the doctor to know that you're taking the vitamin because, you know, we're talking about the, the body. The body is like the car, you know, everything is connected. You know? Or like a big change in your diet or yeah, or anything. Big changes like that. in your diet. Mm -hmm. Anything is important to tell the doctor. And be careful because unfortunately there is a lot of people out there that want to make profit out of the needs of others. And they use uh, either autism, depression, anxiety, uh, weight loss, uh, only God knows, anything to make a profit. And they will sell you a very expensive, you know, X, Y, and Z pill or treatment or whatever. Uh, now the good thing, the, the common thing is that you get into memberships, you know, and uh, you paid a lot of money, you know, and, and you don't know what you're, what you're putting into your body. So just, just make your research. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, all the holistic um, medication, I'm not saying that is bad. I'm not saying that is good. I'm not going into, you know, the extremes from which one is better than the other. Just be careful and educate yourself and do your research with whatever you choose to put into your body. Mm -hmm. One of the gifts of autism is the ability to become fully absorbed in an activity or process. But if that activity is a uh, rumination about negative experiences or self-harming behavior, then uh, we have a whole different set of challenges that might arise. So we need to always be in the lookout for that. And finally, the dynamics in the home environment, whether uh, living with parents, with a group or partner, uh, can have a big impact on how the person thinks, behaves, and feels. Some people with autism may uh, interpret family dysfunctions at their fault. Family stressors related to autism may cause feelings of guilt. Household friction can feel overwhelming, overwhelmingly uh, oppressive or upsetting. Without support, some people opt to try to escape by any means. Okay. And, you know, what can friends and family members do if their loved one with autism is facing a mental health crisis? Well, we, it is important you as a friend or as a family member to go and get straight to the point. Let's use direct specific language, such as, are you thinking about killing yourself? You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Ask the question, you know? If the person says, 
Yes. Because the problem is that if it's like if I ask a question, I'm scared. If I ask a question and he says yes, then now what? What am I gonna do? <laughs> you know? So if the person says yes, then you tell the person, okay, I can take you to the nearest uh, emergency room. Uh, we can call 911 or we can call 988. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, you it's important to do one of those three, okay? Uh, and follow what they, they are telling you. It is important also to assist the, uh, uh, the person, the child with autism or the adult with autism to see a mental health professional immediately, okay? Professionals can uh, probe into the person's statements, uh, check access to lethal means, uh, how often the thoughts uh, occur or what are the uh, protective factors that help them refrain from acting on their thoughts. Sometimes the situation changes dramatically within an hour, sometimes not. Once um, the professional gets a person that has suicidal thoughts, um, then an assessment is completed. You just to determine, you know, how... Um, um, yeah, and know. that's that's and that's best left to the professionals to exactly to to, to determine and then what is the the plan of action, how to mm -hmm. what what's the next step. Be willing to spend more time listening and processing, and do not minim uh, minimize stressors or send negative message about the person distressed. That's the the time for you just to listen. Okay, whatever if the person is telling you that they feel depressed or that they have a suicidal ideation because of X, Y, and Z, it's not the time for you to go and brush them off. Like, oh, you're talking about that? No, let me tell you, my pain is severe or my situation is severe or I'm going, this is not a competition. To it's not, not the suffering Olympics. <laughs> this is not the suffering Olympics. That, oh, let's see who, who, who has the biggest and, and, and the worst. No, you just listen and straight to the point. 911 or emergency room. And it has to happen. Okay. Uh, but what if the person doesn't want to? You're still going to call. If the person doesn't want to go with you to the emergency room because you cannot make it to put it in the car, then uh, you call 911. Show them uh, you care deeply about what happens to them. There is help available to support a better future or they must uh, live to see it. Uh, offer resources and assist them to access if needed. Let them know when you will uh, follow up to check up, check on them and do it. Do not promise anything. If you're not going to check up on them, uh, don't say anything then. Don't say something because, oh, you know, just to to feel good about yourself or, or no, if you promise something and you said something, please make sure that you're going to, you're going to make it happen, you know? Uh, and also uh, you can make a safety plan and we can share a template for creating one in the com comment section. The safety plan ideally should be done with a professional, um, mental health professional or a professional in the health uh, field. Uh, if the person goes to the emergency room or the crisis center at the time of discharge, if you don't have a safety plan in place, please ask for one. Mm -hmm. Great points. Um, so I know earlier um, you were you're talking about um, a little, you mentioned a little bit about masking. Can you explain what it is a little bit more and how that can lead to autistic burnout? Well, yeah, masking, which is uh, also called uh, camouflaging or camouflaging or oh, cam uh, uh, camouflaging. camouflaging, camouflaging, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> or compensating is uh, doing things either consciously or unconsciously to pass as neurotypical. This can be things like faking eye contact during conversation, developing a repertoire or rehearse responses to questions or ignoring uh, intense sensory discomfort 
uh, masking can help people with autism to feel safe and avoid mistreatment or bullying. However, some people are so successful with masking that their uh, autism isn't identified until they are much older. That delayed can lead to mental health issues because people don't get the support for uh, understanding they need uh, the understanding what they need. Uh, some people who mask their identity, interests, and traits end up feeling that they no longer know who they really are because you're masking, you're faking to be someone that you are not. And some have said, some people with autism have said that masking feels like self-betrayal. Uh, others have said that masking makes them feel they are deceiving other people, you know, mm -hmm. because you're betraying yourself. You're pretending to be someone that is not who you are or lying to somebody else because I'm faking to be who am I because uh, I want to be accepted by you. So masking is exhausting because it requires a lot of effort. When people push themselves to behave in ways that don't feel authentic, the result can be an overwhelming feeling of overload, sometimes called autistic burnout. Yeah. It's just, just the amount of sheer physical, mental, emotional energy. It's, it's, it's a lot, to it say is. the least. Yeah. So what can be done to help um, autistic children and adults heal uh, and ideally avoid this burnout in the first place? So let's reduce uh, expectations, uh, not reducing expectation about a uh, person's ability to achieve their goals in life, uh, but, you know, just uh, temporarily lowering uh, the demands um, like, for example, be, let's be uh, uh, aware that your child might be, I don't know, 17. However, cognitively and emotionally, it's uh, 15, you know, so we're going to challenge them, but challenge them and keeping in mind that, you know, emotionally and cognitively, the person is around 15, not about 18. So um, you keep challenging, but just based on where they are at the moment. So let's meet them where they are at that moment. Um, let's uh, accept a person for who they are, allow them to uh, be who they are at home, create that uh, um, safe place for them to just behave as they are, uh, give emotional support, listen to what is bothering them, uh, provide that direct support for daily living activities, uh, assist with the laundry, cooking, grocery shopping, allow for accommodation at school, at work, in the community. Uh, and we are here to help with those accommodations uh, mm -hmm. at work if it's needed. Focus on, on the strengths of the, of the person with autism and uh, preservations to reduce the risk of burnout. In other words, um, for example, trying to find an employment in an area of interest, uh, take classes in topics that are interesting for the person with autism, understand that um, decreases in function may be a sign of an autistic burnout uh, and um, not really laziness or lack of motivation. That's a really great point. Thank you. Um, so I think there there are some maybe comments and questions, but is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience? Yeah, very quickly, Olivia, I just want to let them know that we're going to be sharing information and a lot of resources in the comment section, including uh, contact information for uh, different crisis uh, lines and a template for creating a safety plan. Again, it's important that um, if you create the safety plan, uh, make it with uh, a professional. If the professional is not available, you can make it yourself. But uh, once you see the professional, show it to the professional so they can review it. Um, our constituents and their families can contact us if they are looking for information on mental health 
uh, services uh, providers. We can also provide educational information, but again, just to remind you that based on our Florida status, we cannot provide crisis intervention, but we can provide you with support, educational information, uh, mental health providers, um, guidance of what to do. And um, so you can be prepared, educated, and you can advocate for that loved one. Yeah. Or, you know, those all those strategies and supports to avoid things like autistic burnout in the first place. You know, um, obviously prevention is the, the best thing and for everybody. So, um, so for those of you who are watching, if you have any questions or comments, um, please go ahead and put them in the comments section below. And if you're watching this off, uh, even if you're watching this off, uh, once we get off the air, um, we do continue to monitor them. Uh, if we use your comments to make a, a, a new episode in the future, we will definitely make sure to give you credit. Um, so let me go ahead and see here. Um, uh, Cindy uh, has mentioned uh, any recommendations for therapists who are familiar with autism. Um, Cindy, if we can um, put uh, our our emails in the, in the in the chat and if you can contact us directly so we can get a little bit more information um, as far I'm as. Too. Uh, Let me switch to the card account so because i was uh, using my account um so oh, uh, i'm going thing? to i'm going to add my email and she also shared a great point that every person um i think struggles are valid it does not matter if it doesn't seem hard to you very good point um mm -hmm. So, uh, Cindy, if you can, I, I just uh, add my email. Send me an email, please, and I will uh, be more than happy to share with you some uh, mental health providers, okay? Oh, and then um, Alistair shared a great too. Um, neuro uh, neurodiverse people often connect to each other by relating our personal experiences to um, to another's even mental health crisis, being able to say, me too, here's one, isn't the same as one upping someone's discomfort or dismissing their experience. Thank you very much for that too. Um, and um, mm -hmm. yes, uh, good morning also to, to Angel. I hope this, uh, this would be helpful to you as well. Um, I think that's, yeah, those are all kind of the major uh, comments at the moment. Um, let me also uh, go ahead. I will need to go, <laughs> I think, probably once we get off the air to um, put everything in the comments section because there's lots of different resources. Um, but before I forget, let me also just put the, the link to the safety plan there. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're at the end of the show, um, but I didn't want us to leave uh, without first saying thank you to Yasmin and also to our um, uh, to, to Lee Daly for bringing uh, this valuable information to our audience for um, developing, uh, helping develop this episode. Thank you so much. I did also want to remind our audience that we are on the air every other week. So our next episode is going to be on October 4th. Uh, and 45 ish. So please uh, mark that down. You can't miss it. Uh, and that brings us to the end of the show. Um, but before we go, um, I want to ask you for a little favor. I'm going to be uh, sharing a link uh, for uh, to, to complete an evaluation. And we need uh, one of these for every time that we're doing a show. It's just five simple questions. So Thank you, thank you. If you could please do that, that lets us know um, if you find value in what we're doing. So please give us a like, uh, share this video to your page, meet us back here again every other Friday, 1045, so we can share a cup of coffee with you as we spill the beans on important topics related to autism. So until then, I wanna wish you good vibes and hot coffee. Bye everyone, thank you.